Right, so anyone with one NZ, whether that be in your Echo, your Yaris, your Vitz, your uh, Ruckus, your XB, XA, I don't know if the XA is actually has a one NZ, I'm really not too familiar on, on that platform, but um, anything with a one NZ, um, and you want to make power out of that one NZ, knows that there's a, a sort of safe zone with a boost limit, uh, around maybe 7 to 8 PSI is, is really the limit you want to push on a stock motor. I'm, at 8 psi now, but I'm running on ethanol, so I plan to pump, the, pump up the boost um, just to see how it'll take it. Anyway, those people know that if they want to make more power, they're going to have to forge a motor or do a forged build. Um, that usually means pistons, rods, and valve springs at the minimum. And if you're doing a rebuild, you're going to need gasket kits and and all that sort of gear. And it just it's just it's a very costly thing for. Um, I know it's all relative, but it seems like little power. It's got to be a cheaper more cost-effective way to do this um, and I sort of did some uh, basic googling and I came up with max speed max speeding rods these rods cost me $300 posted now that's incredible when you think of a Corolla rod it costs $800 plus shipping so you wherever they are in the States to get it to wherever you are in the world um, it's gonna cost a little bit of coin so $300 shipped was really good. Um, these are a max speed rod. I don't know how good of a brand they are. And I don't want to tarnish their name in any way. But at the same time, I sort of want to give them a bit of exposure. Because if this works, with this combination of what I'm doing, this could mean cheap power. But anything with a 1NZ, this could, this could mean great things. So I'm pretty excited. And the thing is, they make these two suit. Um, the stock 1NZ, so this hole for the wrist pin is 18 millimeters, which is the stock size of the wrist pin on, I don't know where I put the rod, um, on the 1NZ, that wrist pin there is an 18 mil in uh, diameter, outside diameter, which would normally slide into this and be floating. Right, so what they don't make is a cheap forged piston, or a cheap piston that is a, is gonna work. Okay, so what I've got here, uh, Vitara pistons. All right, these are commonly used in the Honda scene with like D15s and D16s. I'm not too familiar with all the codes and stuff, but um, they're from a Suzuki Vitara. Okay, so I've got these pistons. They're the same bore size. Um, so that was cool. But um, yeah, as I was saying with the wrist pin thing. The, the wrist pins that come with these pistons and the suit Hondas and Vitaras and whatever is a 19mm wrist pin which will not go into the the max speed rods which are suited to the 1NZ. So these are a total uh, foreigner and these are apparently 1NZ specific. So in order to get this to work we could either bore out this, the bush that came with them to suit a 19mm but then you've got really small uh, wall height for that bushing which according to some people isn't too big of a concern but I really wanted it to be you know a little bit thicker than I think it was like 10,000 or something so it's tiny so what you'd have to do is to press out the bush bore out some of the meat on the rod itself put a bigger bush in and then mill it to the 19 mil wrist pin which is what I've had done now most shops will quote you anywhere between 450 to 600 dollars to do that now, if you think about that, and the rods cost $300, you might as well just buy some Corellos or some Molnar rods, right? But I found a place who did it for me for $240. So that brings the price of our rod to around $550, right? give or take. I mean, you might be able to find cheaper machining work elsewhere. That's, that's still a big saving, and considering the pistons cost me $200 posted. That's, um, that's incredible. So what that's basically done is allowed these Vitara pistons to go on our 1NZ rods. Now there's all sorts of other clearance issues and, and center offset between the center, center line of the piston and the skirt of the piston that we've got to look at. But um, I've done some quick measurements and with the Honda guys, I think what they have to do is, um, you know how normally there's a timing mark pointing to, your, pointing to where the timing chain goes? On our stock piston, it's got that dot there. With the Hondas, they have to turn that around um, the other way, otherwise they get a it's, it's, it's not much of a drama, but there's just because of the, the offset of the center, it 
you know, it, it's not centered to the bore. But I've done some, some rough measurements and um, it works out to be fine. So I'll be using the arrow facing the timing side. Now for anyone who's ever put in some forged rods in their one and said no, you've got to, got to notch the block a little bit because obviously the size of that rod is so much thicker than the, the standard rod. But if these fit, then we're in serious business. Alright, so here's another little comparison of um, rod thickness and that sort of gear. Okay, so we've got our max speed rod apart. What I'm going to do is put in the bearings from a random piston link. This might be in piston number three out of that one. Try not to scratch up the walls of the cylinder. Oh, yes. They look good in there. Now an issue I might have, other than obviously the, the rod is going to hit the block, um, the issue being that once the rod gets enough clearance, um, whether or not that skirt there is going to have enough clearance. So that's going to be the, the next thing I have to worry about, but until then, I'm just going to worry about the block. And these rods come with ARP studs as well, so ARP, don't know how legit they are. But. Oh my god, they fit so much. You good? All right. I'm gonna try and do my best to to film this. So bear with me. Oh, I'm gonna go this way first. Piston comes up. Let's see in there, clearing everything. All right, and we're going to come to the other side. And if you can see... We're hitting there. All right, so I've been grinding this thing um, probably I spent maybe three hours on it last night. And I've only gotten one and a half of the notches done, um, which is... I don't know if that's a good time or not, but... Um, it certainly doesn't feel like it. Yeah, it was high noon in our cold Mississippi. Another Sunday feast. Put my head into the kitchen. And I heard that gurgling grease. Said, honey, baby, what's the cook? She said, I never want you, baby. 